Now, the reason I'm so adamant about you guys keying into this video is because I'm going to be going over some topics that, in my opinion, universities and the entire school structure does not want you to know about. And that is, what is the difference between land survey drafting versus civil engineering? Um, and which career path is better. So if you're working inside of civil engineering or you're considering a career change, um, you've probably asked yourself, what is the best long-term path for stability, pay, and career growth? And I want you guys to completely understand civil engineering as a field is absolutely fantastic, but you have other options, whether you work inside of it or whether you don't work in there yet and you're considering going into schooling and getting the education for that degree. Now, civil engineering is often seen as the go-to professional inside of the engineering route. And in my opinion, I would consider that like sort of on the highest docket. Um, right now, fields like mechanical engineering, architecture, all the STEM fields, in my opinion, have been sort of changed in the last few years. We were all sort of told maybe five, 10 years ago that if we were to get into an education inside of engineering, that we'd have a guaranteed job making $110,000, $120,000 a year straight out of college. And in my opinion, I just don't believe that that's the case anymore. And I have friends of mine who are getting out of school with mechanical engineering degrees, with industrial engineering degrees, civil engineering degrees, and they're barely making 60, 70, $75,000 a year at tops, right? out of the school. And this is really kind of concerning because um, I think what has happened is that this is similar to most other degree paths. There's a huge shift where companies need this type of labor yesterday. And so I think in my opinion, uh, schools end up getting put in this sort of advertiser cycle where you get told that, oh, this is the next great, greatest degree, right? Like we were told, uh, you know, go, go become a doctor, right? This what uh, we were told back in the 80s and 90s. Um, in the, you know, early 2000s, it was all about architecture. 10 years ago, it was engineering. And five years ago, it was uh, computer science. Well, what happened to everybody in those fields? Well, the people who got in then, no problem, fine. They were able to sort of build up a name. But at a certain point in time, you hit critical mass where all the schools push through these students, right? And again, they're great students, just fine. But it's marketing. It's marketing to get more people coming through. So what ends up happening? You have a flooded market with too many people in the field that they told you was going to pay you very well, but no longer does because guess what? The demand is the same, but the supply is through the roof. So therefore, the price is go down. So this is one of the things about civil engineering that I want you guys to just think about is that you do have alternatives into something like land survey drafting. It's a very underrated, but highly rewarding alternative. So whether you work inside of the field of civil engineering, it's a great way if you want to pivot into something freelance. And I'll go over a couple of those reasons why. But also, if you are looking into getting into civil, I want you guys to be very cautious right now about what you choose as your major, what you choose to go to schooling for and spend your basically most productive years of your life from 18 to let's say 24, okay, over a degree that might not actually pay dividends what you think because these degrees are expensive, you spend your best years doing so, and you do also have alternatives that most people probably don't want you to know about. So in this survey, I'm gonna be comparing these two and sort of give you a presentation on head to head why land store drafting might be a better option for you if you're in one of these two fields. So first off, what is land survey drafting? Well, uh, survey drafting involves the process of collecting data from what happens out in the field in surveying. If you've ever been on a roadway, you probably see those guys with the tripods and the little camera and stuff. Those are called total stations. They're GPS machines in order to take data of the earth around us. Now, that data gets then sent to the drafters who are in the office right, gets processed, turns into a final document in CAD, and that is the work that they do. I want you to understand that these two fields are completely separate, right? They really don't have too much to do with each other as far as the day-to-day -day work. Overall, yes, they do have some sort of uh, similarities as far as the background knowledge that you need, but from one to the next, the you can consider the field side very high labor, but sometimes also medium to high skill. Uh, some people are low skill, they just, you know, dig holes, but, uh, and, and look for uh, property corners, but uh, some of those guys are actually genuinely really smart. But for the people that are in the office, that is very high skill, very low labor. You're in front of a computer. But you have access to some of the greatest resources inside of any sort of organization that is a surveying firm, which is you're going to be right next to the licensed surveyor, project managers, and cab managers the entire time that you are working inside of that company. So what is the types of jobs we might go over? It might be a boundary survey, uh, topography surveys, site plans, and basically we're just kind of collecting that raw data using AutoCAD to make a precise drawing, and that gets sent off to the licensed surveyor. They sign and seal it, and then it goes off to the city or the client or whoever paid for it. Now, again, these are also very expensive documents, just like civil engineering, but the life cycle for a survey is potentially 
many, many, many multiples shorter than one in engineering, which is why it might be a good chance for you. If you work in the field, you're trying to go freelance as a civil drafter. So let's go ahead and compare Lancer drafting to civil engineering across some several key areas. So education and time commitment. You know, for starters, a civil engineering degree is going to take you about four years. If you want to go after your professional engineering license, that's going to be basically another four on top of that. A lot of people like to go after their master's first, but regardless, you're going to have to put hours into a firm, then go after your multiple different exams, and finally sit for your big test, and then try to apply for the license. Whereas with surveying, uh, you really don't have to do that. There is the surveyor's license, license that is sort of the big boy at the end of the road, right? But I like to give opportunities to people who, you know, maybe don't want to go into civil engineering. When I was going to school, you know, I was very daunted by, you know, the calculus, fluid mechanics, structural analysis, all of the very hard classes that you'd be doing inside of an engineering course. And honestly, for some people, that's just, it's just not for them, right? And, you know, we have to understand that 50% of college engineering students will end up dropping out that is the current dropout rate right now. It's 50%. Go look it up. Um, and so what ends up happening with this 50% of people who try to get into this field? You know, what's the alternative for them? Is it going to McDonald's and flipping hamburgers? Is it, uh, you know, going into something like IT or, or maybe architecture, right? I really believe that there are other alternatives, and this is why the option of Lancer drafting might be there. Within Lancer drafting, you don't need a degree. OK, uh, you don't need to agree whatsoever. As long as you can prove your skill set in geomatics, the public land system and surveying theory, you have the exact credentials to get into survey drafting and make really good money as a drafter. And you have to understand that you can pivot into freelancing even faster than you can getting into the actual job at a company. So realistically, time invested many, 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 many years less to get almost equivalent pay. The upside with survey drafting is that even for civil drafters or for, for survey drafters, going freelance will pay you more money as an individual, as a sole proprietor, as someone who just wants to go after drafts and do them, get paid on a freelance basis and make money, you will be able to make more money on that field compared to even civil. Now, again, if you have the PE license, obviously, you can then use that to make really good money. Same thing with the surveying license. That's a whole different story. But for people that want to get into a career that's going to give them a longevity, but also have better sort of pivot style when it comes to freelance work, definitely, definitely land story drafting. So uh, conclusion, if you want to be in a faster and more affordable path right now, instead of waiting four years and the 50% chance that you're probably not going to make it through all of that schooling, consider land survey drafting. So let's go ahead and dive into the job market. Um, and I want you guys to understand, uh, you know, that if you already have a job, you'll kind of understand what I'm talking about. So so job market and demand. Well, with civil engineering right now, I want you to understand that there is a lot of engineering fields that are very saturated right now. Civil engineering is a lot less than other engineering fields for sure. But unless you got internships inside of college, you have a much tougher time finding an actual very high paying entry level position out of college. You have to have that as leverage. Otherwise, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to get into a firm and they're going to basically pay you and bully you into a lower dollar amount because they can there's a bunch of other applicants and they are much more hungry to get paid much less. And so why would they choose you uh, compared to someone that they can literally pay, uh, you know, 40% less on average. So uh, that's one of the reasons why you may want to look at a different field. Many engineers right now struggle to find jobs after graduation. Um, and that's just because they don't get any opportunities. And so you're going to end up in a very bad loop where, you know, you need experience in order to get hired, but you don't have the experience because you've never gotten hired. So this is just going to compound over time. And this is how you have people, especially post COVID who are, you know, three, four years past their graduation date, and they still have not found an actual really good job inside of their field. They maybe got like an entry level position here and there, but as far as career paths to get going towards, and, you know, basically what they're doing is they're just trying to uh, hope for the license, right? That's all they're doing is they're biding their time to go after the license. But for someone who wants an actual good career, that pays well after college. Civil is very tough right now. Um, and this just follows very, uh, you know, basic economic cycles. You know, during downturns, um, projects are going to get delayed. And especially with the timeline in civil engineering, the timelines are so long. You get have projects that are uh, three, six years long. And this makes it almost impossible for someone who wants to do freelance uh, drafting inside of civil stuff. You're going to be waiting on projects. You'll be wasting your time uh, basically waiting for the next job to come around or for stuff to sort of wrap up for you to get paid. It's not a very good field to do freelancing in. However, with land survey drafting, it's quite the opposite. Very high demand right now. And the reason being is most people just don't know about it. So inside of survey drafting, especially you know in cities where the demand is very high, um, 
they can't find enough people who know how to do this in person. And this is what makes them more open to the freelancing side of things is because they can't hire anyways. So there's less competition and there's just faster job placement. Um, I have students inside of my program. Literally, I had one uh, this February 2nd. He signed up for my program. Three weeks later, hired full time as a survey drafter, came in with zero CAD knowledge, a little bit of survey experience, but zero CAD knowledge, was able to pivot into this field, start drafting, build a portfolio, portfolio get hired in literally three weeks time. Uh, I don't think there's any other uh, profession or job that you can do that in right now where you can literally skip the four years of education in schooling, the you know potentially fifty to hundred thousand dollars in debt in schooling debt that you would have, right? And immediately just jump into a career that pays you. That is technical. That is STEM. That isn't a trade. You don't have to go to trade school for this, right? That is just strictly STEM related is awesome because you can use your brain if you have sort of, you know, developed mind, you like doing engineering stuff. You find 3D printers pretty interesting. I got one behind me right now. Um, but for people like you, you know, what is the alternative? You know, if you don't make it through engineering, if you don't find a good job in there and you're basically just waiting on the, on the engineering license, you know? So that's just one opportunity for you and one option. So if you're trying to find very consistent work, lands for drafting is much better than civil engineering right now. So again, just an overview on the income potential and potential career growth. So uh, entry level civil engineer is you're going to be making about sixty to eighty thousand dollars per year. Uh, right now, most people I know they're making like sixty five out of college, which is it's not great. We were promised one hundred and ten just you know six years ago pre COVID. What's going on with that? I don't know. But to reach the $100,000 range, civil engineers are going to need a lot more time and experience in there. Most of my friends right now who are four or five years in the industry are just now cresting $100,000 with bonuses. So without their Christmas bonus, they're not hitting that mark. And again, mind you, we were promised that years ago that we'd be making that from day one. Uh, you're going to need a PE license eventually. That's sort of the natural progression. That does open up a lot more doors. But what do we do in the meantime, right? Uh, you know, project management roles or leadership positions, but not everyone's really cut out, cut, cut out for like the sort of C-suite corporate style stuff. Um, and I don't blame it. You know, you just want to work. You want to do engineering projects. You find the actual work interesting. You don't want any other office bullshit, right? You just want the real deal stuff. And so for many civil engineers, the salary growth is going to be limited by your slow career progression because you're waiting for that next milestone, that major milestone to happen for you to make that jump. And then when you're side of a company, right, a lot of times what they'll do is you get that all done and then they're going to basically softball you uh, your, your next raise, right? They're not going to give you that same sort of gap that you were expecting. And so you're going to have to go find another position. That sucks when you have to do the whole cycle over again, right? Job applications, looking for another career, et cetera, et cetera. Lands for drafting, not so much. Um, unlike civil engineers, lands for drafting, drafters have the ability to increase their income much faster, especially if you get into the freelance side of things and the consultancy side of things, right? Freelance survey drafters typically charge between $50 to $100 an hour. Again, $50 is like rock bottom, average is about 100. Um, someone like me, I'm about $200 an hour, but you can earn five to $10,000 a month extra on the side in income alone, just as a freelancer, and you only need a handful of clients, right? That's what's so nice about this. The project time is so much less uh, compared to civil engineering. You might have projects that take you an hour. My bread and butter was residential boundary surveys that would take me literally an hour of time, get it done, 100 bucks out the door. I could do multiple of those per day. And the clients that I'd have, one or two of them, would be able to provide me that constantly. So I wasn't waiting for the next project or looking for another client or wondering where my next job was going to come from. It was the same people over and over and over again. So it's very consistent. It's very stable, even on the freelancing side of things. And if you wanted to get into an office, super easy to break into and you can get paid well, go down the route to become a project manager, right? And then if you really want to, sometimes the companies will pay for your education, pay for your schooling to go after that big professional surveyor's license, if that's the way that you want to roll. So uh, even full-time drafting jobs uh, pay well, you know, inside of that field. And so as long as you're able to, you know, you have the opportunity for overtime, and then you also have that sort of progression using the, the company itself to sort of pay for your schooling. So if you want to start making good money sooner, lands for drafting is definitely a smarter choice. So for civil engineers, um, you know, most of them work in an office setting, construction site, government agencies. And so their schedules are very dictated by these project deadlines that are very, very, very long and drawn out, uh, you know, potentially being site inspections and, you know, a lot of travel. And for some people, they want to do that. But for someone that just wants to do the work and not have to deal with all the extra bureaucracy around it, uh, surveying is a lot less. Now, I'm not saying it's 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 100% clear and free, but it's a lot less compared to civil engineering on most projects, just because of the average life cycle of these projects. And so uh, survey drafting is going to offer you more flexibility as a drafter. You have the potential to work remotely. You have the potential to work from home. You can choose your own schedules as a freelancer. You can avoid the long hours uh, and you know stress of being on a job site because all you're doing is just the drafting. I mean, I would pop in YouTube and, and get some drafts done 
you can listen to Spotify, a podcast, whatever. Uh, it's not a very high stress job like civil engineering is where you potentially are, you know, unfortunately, your 40 hours a week are turning into 60, 70 hours a week. And that's your new norm. And that's not, that's not right. I don't think many people should have to do that. So uh, for people that are wanting to earn good money while maintaining that work-life balance, definitely land story drafting. So here's how you make the right decision. Well, first off, you're going to want to assess your interests. You know, if you are potentially looking into going down the route of civil in terms of schooling, you're going to college for it. I would take a step back, really listen to this video and maybe evaluate where your money and more importantly, your time is going. Um, I was fortunate enough when I was going for schooling, a lot of my classes were sort of paid for based off of, you know, my grades. I didn't have like a full ride or anything like that, but uh, a good bit of it was kind of covered based off of um, sort of my testing and scores just because of the state that I'm in. And so I had that advantage. But to be completely honest with you, if I could go back, I would not even step one foot inside of a university uh, because it was entire, you know, I wouldn't call it a waste of my time. It led me to where I am right now. But for someone just who's going into it, I think even if it's being paid for, you also might want to reevaluate it because that's again, the most valuable thing that you have is time. And so that four or five years that you're going to be spending going towards that degree, trying to get that all done, you know, and there's engineers who I talked to who they did all of that, right? And guess what? They don't like the job. And which is really crazy because we're told that we have to figure this stuff out when we're 16, 17 years old, literally still children, right? To figure out what we're going to be doing for the rest of our lives and actually really big impacts. Because after that point in time, you know, you start having bills to pay you may potentially want to start a family. The second you got kids, that is all out the window. But I'm telling you right now, even if that's the case, you can still pivot into a field right now, especially if you work in uh, civil engineering, you're trying to pivot into surveying. This is also a really good route for you. Um, so just consider your skills. You know, if you're strong in CAD uh, and you like doing the CAD stuff and you want to just do the CAD stuff and not all the other bureaucracy with, within uh, civil engineering, consider survey drafting. Um, and then obviously explore your educational options and just seek guidance. Uh, if you would like to get some additional resources from me, you can book a call with me in the description down below. But also, I want you to go around and talk to some surveyors about the openings they have and the availability they have within their companies. Where you maybe sort of wedge yourself in there. Just start making conversations. It's a good place to start. So in conclusion, I'm a little bit biased about land story drafting because this is the field that I'm in. Land story drafting literally saved my life. I was on track to become a mechanical engineer. My whole life changed upside down. I got into a bad accident. And through it, I was able to get into survey drafting. And so, uh, you know, survey drafting provides you a lot of really good benefits, very similar to uh, civil engineering, but it's just a lot less stress on your end um, that you have to deal with all the time. And it just has better... Uh, you know, scalability right now, especially just because of the market. Okay. You don't really have much competition and the life cycles of projects are, are easier. And if you really just like doing CAD and you want to have your finger on the pulse of every single job that you're doing, that's all you like to do. My, my goodness, land store drafting for you. So if everything we talked about inside of this video interests you and you want to see how you can potentially make a career shift into land survey drafting, I have a video for you in the description that I want you to check out where I'm going to explain everything in depth of what you need to know about this industry, all the benefits of it, and I'm going to give you a clear roadmap of what you need to do to make the right decision. So uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one.